Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching SiliconANGLE, Luigi Bonds theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We are live in Las Vegas for ServiceNow's Knowledge 15. Hashtag is No15. Join the conversation, go to crowdchat.net slash No15 and leave a comment uh, and join the threads. We're happy to uh, answer any questions if you post them there. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest, Robert Fedorek, CEO, co-founder of Wolfpack Cloud Services. Welcome back to theCUBE. Good to be back. Um, to see you again. Founder, CEO, you won a bunch of hackathons, I heard from your website mentions you've done a lot of hacking. But now you're running your own service company on, for ServiceNow? Correct. Um, we're actually, um, we need to work on the name a, a little bit. We're, we're actually trying to uh, not compete on services so much as really get into the app development ecosystem. And so it's not Glidesoft, fun. like uh, Fred Luddy's initial <laughs> name of the company. We couldn't come up with that Wolfpack's clever good name. name. Wolfpack's <laughs> good name. Wolf, yeah. It's, you know, Wolves. Wolves and sheep's clothes, that's your developers these days. Very appropriate um, for Vegas, don't you think? What's going on with you guys? Tell us what's happening. Um, obviously, ServiceNow is exploding. People are happy. Great developer community. Mm -hmm. Young, modern, vibe, um, transformative, disruptive, um, and valuable to companies who are deploying. So give us a taste of your, your view of what they're doing, your experiences with ServiceNow. What's your take? So, um, for myself and for my peers at my company, um, this is really just everything is coming into bloom. So we've always known all along that ServiceNow was about enterprise service management. It was about a platform for development. It wasn't about IT and ITSM. It's just, that's just where the seed was planted. And so we've always known that it was going to be this. And, uh, and, and people are finally there and realizing it. The, the market is caught up to the messaging. Um, the other thing that we're super excited about is that ServiceNow just announced their app store, which is something that we've been waiting for for years. And now the floodgates are ready to open and we just want to crest that wave and go. Yeah, and so give us your take on the App Store. You looking forward to selling through that or yes, integrating sir. through? What, any products there, apps you guys are going to be loading? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've certified an app already. It's on the App Store. It's, uh, it's all about super ultra rapid deployment of uh, self-service experiences in a way that's, uh, that's richer than what you get out of box, but also orders of magnitude faster. A lot of the new generation guys out there, past you know, good five, seven years, have really been trained on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Get some in compute, get some storage, agile. Um, that's now going to the enterprise. We're seeing Amazon certainly winning in the enterprise. But ServiceNow has that feel, right? Stand up stuff quickly, iterate fast, deploy valuable assets right. quickly. Do you think that is the beginning of it? The, that wave is it more? kind of early days, what's your take? Would you peg an inning if you could peg an inning on first inning, third inning? What was your, what's your take on that? Because it seems to get, the traction seems to, 1,600 yeah. developers coming to CreateCon. The, I think the, the best is yet to come, so uh, I don't know where it would fit into the baseball metaphor precisely, but, it, but the best is yet to come. So uh, up until this point, you've seen uh, ServiceNow kind of say, oh, well, we see that a lot of our customers are doing HR management. Let's make it easier to structure license agreements. Let's make an HR, HR management module, right? But I think what you're going to find now is that they step away from the uh, from the actual actual process application development, and they move more into just like raw platform to development to empower people like my team and I and all the other developers out there who will have the kind of the vertical experience to say, well, we know all there is to know about this particular thing, and it would take ServiceNow far too long to develop a mature process in that area. But us working in our basement, we can. You know, we can build that, we can put it on the app store. And Fred, has, Fred Luddy's always told the story of when he first developed the platform. He said, here we go. And you know, the customers and VCs like, well, what do you do with it? Everything, uh, right? Anything. And so What's anything, yeah. What's an app? <laughs> okay, great. So you're comfortable that you're not going to be competing with ServiceNow for app development, or not? Is there an overlap there? There's always a little bit of an overlap. You got to be careful about what kind of problems you want to solve. So if you, uh -huh. like for example, if, if you had spent the last couple of months certifying an app that fixed an interface problem, <laughs> <You're> gone, <laughs> you yeah. just got crushed, okay? Because okay? yeah. like they solved everybody's interfaces problem in one swoop, right? If, right. You, if you're already thinking, like, let's figure out how to get service down on an iWatch, you're already too late. 
Um, so if you're trying to solve like interface and interactivity problems, you might be in a little bit of trouble. So you, you always have to make sure that you're solving some kind of like process some, or business a workflow. Process yeah, a business a process or some kind of function that's just not done right at all. So good, good developer programs have the ability for allow folks to be enabled to build businesses. You're building a business on top of ServiceNow. Um, there's always that fear of, you know, or which side of the street am I on? Will they eat me up? We've seen examples of Twitter, for instance, having challenges in their developer community by essentially putting people out of business by rolling out new features. Um, so that's the challenge. So what's your take on that? You've built a business, you're building a business, you're able to get value out of that. What's your take on your roadmap and for other developers, what's your advice to them? Uh, be really careful around developing for, <laughs> for interface issues. Uh, just let ServiceNow handle that. Let ServiceNow handle the platform. Go so and pick, solve a, pick a workflow process. Yeah, go and, go and solve a business problem. It's interesting, Fred was, I asked him the question, I said, what, what are you most excited about in terms of you know, cutting edge use cases? And he actually brought up Internet of Things and talked mm -hmm. about new capabilities that are being developed that weren't around because of connectedness. Mm -hmm. and we're mostly an IT problem. In IT, it's all, it's all the IT SM, you can see that. But like outside of IT, Internet of Things is a connected network interface. So there's whole new workflow opportunities coming out of things like that, the onboarding app at KPMG. So he's always he's laying down these examples of, this is the opportunity to disrupt an existing monolithic enterprise software app. Mm -hmm. um, do you view it that way? And, and how do you look at your growth for your business? Um, let me take the first question first, because for me they're completely different realms for answers. So um, in terms of disrupting, I, there's, the, we're just at that, that first stage. So now, that via the App Store, they've empowered uh, developers to actually go after some of the incumbent large solutions. So right now, ServiceNow isn't really replacing large scale, like incumbent HR applications, HR silo applications, large scale facilities applications. They're kind of, they're kind of building a, a way for people to interface with the facility service via the, the kind of, like, talks about the system of engagement, right? So they got to get that engagement side, but they're, they're not cracked, they're not cracking the serious enterprise software there. But with the app store, now people are going to be able to make like a Viva play in the Salesforce space where they could say, like, I got all these, I got all the space knowledge and I have a platform that lets me develop. And with the introduction of the App Store, I have the ability to scope an app so that I'm not just writing open code that anybody can copy and paste into their own instance. So you would expect the ecosystem to, to pick up a lot of that, that white space um, and even get into systems of, of, of record or, or? Well, making or no? ServiceNow the system of record, because ServiceNow is really just a collection of interfaces and functions and tools for you to build this stuff off of. It's just a development platform and so, I mean, there's. See, oh, go ahead, please. Uh, so it, it's really just, you know, it's it's really just getting the people with the industry experience everywhere. The service now would never be able to collect and accumulate and build off of quickly, and and now these people are finally motivated. and They have the tools enough to do the job themselves. So on your website, you have an app called Focal Point. Yes, sir. Right? And that's gonna that's in the store, mm -hmm. right? Tell us about Focal Point. Focal Point is about um, rapidly deploying self-service experiences. So the, the one critical, the, the big, long, expensive piece of any ServiceNow implementation is building a catalog for your customers to engage with. And so Focal Point just makes that really, really, orders of magnitude easier. So I'm, I'm spending a thousand times less money, a thousand times less time uh, to deploy this. And then we have a package of other, um, of other things you can do within the self-service experience. And then we wrap it all around this concept of, of, a, of a, a point of interest. So the normal catalog is just a gigantic haystack for which we expect you to find your needle. And we have things like search, and, and search is really just medicine for a problem that we shouldn't have, which is I'm only interested in certain things. I don't want your everything. Yeah. I want my certain things. It's a blunt instrument, sir. Yeah, and so <laughs> the, we, the focal point says, look, if you're working in finance, we're going to give you everything you need to know about SAP. It's in the SAP focal point. And then we draw in all the rest of the data from the platform, right? The catalog items, the knowledge articles, different team members that are important to that service that we offer, um, external links and attachments. So we can really just pool a ton of different resources uh, in a richer way than ServiceNow is out of the box. Do you, you automate the, that? No, we don't automate oh, okay. it. We just make it very, very, like, so what's something that you're interested in in the cube? 
right? Probably probably AV technology. So if we were if we had yeah. focal point deployed at your company, we would have an AV technology focal point. And as fast as I can type AV technology, that focal point is deployed, and you can now interface with your customers in a self service manner, like literally as fast as I can spell it. And and. The, so Fred talked this morning about three sort of personas, the portal admin, the service designer, and the professional developer. You're, you're going after the second, is that right? The, the catalog designer, or am yeah, I? The first and the second, so we roll yeah, out. Okay. We, the portal, we, the look yeah, and feel of the portal We roll itself. out who can create a focal point, uh, but we don't expect the focal point is going to be a developer. We're going to expect the focal point uh, creator to be uh, kind of more administrative. Yeah, And right. so all they have to do is be able to spell whatever the interest, the topic of interest is, and then be able to collect the other pieces of data and relate it to. Is that to like Slack? I mean, it's in a way Slack kind of has that functionality. Slack is more about team collaboration. This is more about, um, about com communities of consumers that are interested in specific things. They're not, they're not interested in everything. They're interested in specific things. And just giving them the fastest way to get to everything that has to do with that in one shot. But there's there's all kinds of opportunities for, uh, for automation on that. Like yeah, right. Scan my catalog, scan my knowledge base, then relate that stuff automatically. We're just, that's like a V2 thing. Yeah, but, I'm, yeah. but I'm envisioning a curation capability, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, okay, yeah. that's really, really yeah. where you're headed. So, so I can dramatically accelerate and lower my cost for the time that mm -hmm. it takes to set up a focal point, a catalog, yeah. a portal. And it's, it's also deployable by, via friendly URL. So when you create a, a focal point, I can now send my community, look, it, whenever you have a problem with this area of interest, go to this, go to this link and we've got everything you need there. Even, even people that are exceptionally disciplined and good with ServiceNow, when they get to that point in the process, like we don't have knowledge articles set up, or we don't have catalog items set up, if they need people to interact with the teams that support it, it's still create a distribution list, email that. Is that an internal tool or external? Or both? No, this is, this is actually entirely built on the ServiceNow platform. We have no external tools or integrations. Okay. It's, it's a native app for ServiceNow, which is actually something we're pretty proud of. There's a lot of like integrations on the space, and there's value to those certainly. But we don't, we're not playing outside. This is like everything you need in the ServiceNow platform. How do you guys make money? You charge for the download? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And you, so if I'm no, a it's a it's a subscription Subs service. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. There, you have a freemium model or no? I mean, you can try one before. So we have a we we're kind of limited there in terms of what yeah. the store offers us. So this, uh -huh. the store is still ramping up its capabilities as well. Um, okay. But we one thing we do offer is a 30 day free trial. All right, and then you turn on the meter after 30 days. So how would we use it? Let's just say that we had service now for theCUBE and all of our, our fans out there. Could mm -hmm. we deploy this, and that would be for our internal yeah, certainly. or external? Yep, no, you can, you can deploy it externally. Some of the features won't be as rich as, uh, as we intend, mostly because we kind of anticipate that ServiceNow is going to expand in that. Like a lot of their customers want truly external, internet-facing, uh, service catalog, right? But we're, sure. but they're not quite there yet. They got the pricing model; they just don't have the mechanics. But we're already ahead of them, and we have we have it ready for that. But if you you could deploy Focal Point to to um, to, to people who are interested in, in we'd love it for our crowd chat app, right? And you could you, you could show like the people who are in charge of certain areas of interest. Uh, you could have several knowledge articles. Hey, how do you get in touch yeah. with us? How do you schedule us for a, that kind of thing? So you had said earlier the, the, the market finally caught up to the marketing, and uh, I have to say, I think it actually occurred quicker than I've observed in most organizations, most com vendor companes. Would you uh, agree with that, or have you you've been chomping at the bit because you're you uh, see I, a business opportunity around it's it? It's kind of hard to see past my own bias yeah. there because <laughs> from like, it was like eight or nine years ago when I first, when I first peered into it and started playing with the with the capabilities, I was like, why does this, why does this have to be about IT? And I was, I was kind of like simultaneously, I was in the middle of, a, of an onboarding project, and uh, you know, we were just filling out all the tasks that you have to do to get somebody on board. It's really shocking when you list them all out. Uh, but everybody was like talking IT, 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 and I'm like, well, how's this person going to get badge access? Oh, well, we don't really care, we're IT. <laughs> like, shouldn't we? I mean, don't they care? Because now, the, now yeah. the person who's ordering that yeah. onboarding request, they still have to like, okay, I did my IT bit, let me just swivel my chair over to my other computer with the, with the HR yeah. engagement system and engage there. And, and that's what really, it was the combination of onboarding uh, and the ServiceNow capability that made me realize. Um, the potential. Yeah, just, and by the way, KPMG, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> it, just, it made me realize that it wasn't, it wasn't just about us anymore, it was, 
it was about something much, much bigger. So why'd you say uh, you're welcome to KPMG? Oh, their onboarding app. <laughs> yeah, right. So every time I say onboarding at the conference, that's KPMG getting a ding. <laughs> Get a little favorite on that. So the, the future for ServiceNow, were you looking at building, your, investing in your business house? You got some customer traction, got the apps going. What's next for you guys? More apps. Uh, so we're certainly not going to say no to services, and uh, you know, there's certainly a lot of space for that, but Really what motivates us is, is solving those business problems and bringing new and exciting things. And But you guys aren't like an app factory in the sense of dreaming up new apps. You go talk to customers and that's how you get the engagement and then roll that in? Or are you guys back there incubating apps and throwing them out there? Or both? A little bit of both. It's like, I kind of like I said last time on the show, you gotta, you, gotta you gotta learn to have a fine appreciation for the smell of BS. And you just gotta go looking for it, right? What smells like garbage? What, what, are like, what, do, what do people hate working with? and fix that problem for them. Yeah, yeah. And so we were lucky enough with this last time we have this idea. We have a, a bunch of ideas queued up and maybe some of them won't work. But I mean, there's a lot of old processes out there. I mean, cobweb apps that have been hanging around, terminal mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. that evolved to web and now they're kind of hit their kind of end of life. Yeah, but it's still all about the app, right? Totally, the apps. Yeah. I mean, you know. And, well, the business doesn't change, but the apps need to but change. So, yeah. so but it, when, when Apple first came out with the Apple Store, all the, all the enterprises, oh, we're going to have an Apple Store for the enterprise, App Store for the enterprise. And some have, many haven't. What, what, do you, what, what models do you see in the enterprise that are actually working? I mean, ServiceNow is just getting into it. Yeah. Right? Well, I think the apps, are, the, the apps are, uh, I, I, I don't know a whole lot about Salesforce, mm -hmm. so I mean, I just, I spend my day uh, working ServiceNow stuff. I see my kids for a little bit, and then I go back to ServiceNow development for my company. So I don't, I don't have the time you can't to do with that Salesforce. Question, yeah. um, but I think th what the apps that you find on, on the, that you're going to be able to buy from ServiceNow have a lot more credibility because they're backed by an enterprise application. So, um, so people aren't going to think as much about getting an app for the ServiceNow platform as they would somebody saying, oh, I just got this app on my phone that I'm going to do onboarding with. And they're going to be like, excuse me, what you're going to do with that phone? Yeah, yeah. That being said, I think that, that the, the, the tiny little single function apps that are just ultra, ultra good at that single function are really the, the biggest existential threat to ServiceNow over the kind of the five to 10 year cycle mm -hmm. is what's going to happen if we get these tiny apps that do one yeah. thing really, really well and what if we can get that to talk to 100 other things really, really well? Well, if you have the systems of record, then you can control some of the data. The data right. fabric might be yeah. a strategic. Yeah. And that's the advantage that ServiceNow has, is that they have that system of record thing and the governance component of it. So that's why I think apps that are developed on the ServiceNow platform right now have that credibility within the enterprise to, to get noticed. And get through the CMDB. So if you have a single CMDB and you've got all these apps sort of revolving around it, you've got leverage that Well, the market validates that. I mean, is that what you mean? or? Not necessarily around the CMDB because there's a lot of stuff that don't interface with the CMDB, okay. but it's just that. It's so when just you say single system of record, what do you mean? Because you, they, they, service now talks about their system of engagement, right? Whereas two different say, things, uh, right? So the system oh, of record, where are we storing the data once we've engaged? The, the system. So of that's going to be Oracle. That's going to be Workday, it's Salesforce, and, right? And service now. Yeah. So As now the app creators capture that data. The app correct? creators are. I mean, they're they're playing in both realms, so they have to be the. They're adding capability to the single system of record by saying we can now store these things because of this app. Yeah. But they're also well, APIs and connectors are, are going to be the vehicle. I think that's what we're seeing, Dave. Connectors. Mm -hmm. like, so if I have engagement data from ServiceNow, I bring the ServiceNow systems of record, and then okay, if I need to talk to another system, that's potentially an opportunity. But it's going to be stored on your app, your platform. Where's it going to be stored? That's what I'm missing. Right, you were just saying. It's going to be stored on. I feel like we just all now? started talking different languages here, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how I can answer okay. your question. <laughs> all right, let's go back. So, John so, will explain it to me later. So, the Facebook Developer Platform uh, Conference, Facebook Development Conference, couple okay. last month, uh, Zuckerberg rolled out the portfolio of apps. So, if you look at Facebook on the consumer side, it's interesting, right? Yeah. They had Poke and all these other apps, but WhatsApp became the messaging app. Yep. Or on one side, they get there. They relaunched messaging as a separate app, but they put it as a portfolio. So that's interesting. So that's a consumer play, but Facebook still is a system of record. So, what so I'm, I say, okay, what I'm getting so get at it. is, so Facebook's the system of record in the same way that ServiceNow is going to be the system. That's of the way record. I'm envisioning it. I see. It's okay. an unknown. It's an unknown scenario. We but ServiceNow is also going to be the system of engagement. Even, that's, though, that's even as is Facebook. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, ServiceNow wants to be the preferred system of engagement and record for work. Yeah. Right. And so they might Facebook buy. Too, they so might buy you guys. That's so, not so. part of the messaging. No, it's, it's really not. not. No, it's yes, you, it is. You talk to them about. about did you, did going you see? Into, did you see Letty's keynote? Sure, sure. But but you talked about 
what's going to be the system of record for HR? Is it going to be Workday or is it going to be ServiceNow? Well, I think with the App Store, you're going to see people trying to make ServiceNow the system yes, of record. Yes, this is what I was saying before. But that's useless unless you have a system of engagement. Well, we're connecting the dots. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no hold, on, hold on, we're connecting the dots. This is what's interesting. This yeah, is a good this is an interesting conversation. Yeah, okay, what he's saying is, is that if you have the monolithic system of record today, say Workday, yeah. and that's a big app in the company, ServiceNow gets a beachhead in that for their piece, builds an app on top of it. With the App Store, a customer could potentially cobble together and phase out Workday. That's essentially the connecting the dots. So I'm a customer, I have what? An agile platform. By, by I picking off little community. pieces of Workday, right? Huh? Little, little, little pieces in function, right? I mean, they potentially that's could. a big app. Right? It's not like. Yeah, exactly, but, yeah. but ServiceNow can't take that big app off. Right, so but micro right. apps can attack that. Yeah, or, or, or people that, that, that are just space experts, right? So maybe even a former Workday developer says, oh man, I just, you know, I know everything I need to know about Workday. All I need is the tools of this platform and the ability to scope it so it's mine and not everybody with the copy paste function. And, and they, they can take on those monsters. Yeah, right. so that's, I, that's a great, exactly my point yeah, with the Facebook. What Facebook's proven is that we, WhatsApp beat their ass in the market on that one app and they said, we'll buy it, brought it in. So in this case, if someone, a Workday developer says, hey, here's the, the portfolio of Workday apps, but this is what everyone hates. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to innovate and build a siloed app on ServiceNow They'll still buy Workday and pay double license at some point. They'll, they'll phase that out. If more people do that, then ServiceNow has a enabled a collection of yeah. apps that could do Workday. All you, all you have to do is look at what happened in Salesforce with the Viva model, right? That's a two billion dollar company, and they bought it. And it's really just an extension of service uh, of, of Salesforce, Salesforce yeah. right? Yeah. So we got these. Pla we already know what it's like when when platforms give developers the opportunity. Are we at time? Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. Okay, uh, so yeah. we already know what, 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 what happens when platforms kind of open it up to the broader ecosystem yeah. of the developers. We just have to, yeah, so in, what ServiceNow has to do now is make sure that they win the war of developers against Salesforce. How do they do that? What's your take on that? What's well, I think, they're, I think they're already coming a long way to do it. So now, first year, we got private instances. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so developers like me can now say, like, I need, I need to be able to experiment. I need to be able to do that on not my employer's instance. Yeah. Or, or people like me, I have, I have developer friends in the .NET ecosystem, they're just brilliant guys who have been developing 25, 30 years, and I'm like, you gotta get on the ServiceNow bandwagon, it's just like, it's so hot, it's so fresh. Okay, send me an SDK. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> get me access to a demo system. Uh, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and now, finally, we yeah. got that. So now well, Sandboxing is a beautiful thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You have sandboxes out there, yep. private instances, and really so, do the testing, push code, DevOps-like yep. function. Yeah, so it's, it, they've opened it up for that, so I, I think this, the, the, having the dev instance is, is a huge asset on the... But this is why we feel like there's so much room here to, for this company to grow. I mean, the, the platforms beat products in this economy, mm -hmm. and the opportunity is just you know, endless. Well, the tools need platforms too, right? So the opportunity is if you're an app and you're out there, you're an island and you need a platform, you, you can actually be part of a platform as a tool and be highly successful. The, the Salesforce example we mentioned. Yep. You know, so that's going to be very interesting. I mean, tools don't win by themselves. Well, I mean, yeah, two years ago we were saying this. I mean, you you obviously were saying this, Robert, six or seven years ago. This is this is a pass play. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an application development platform. Well, the big thing in Silicon Valley is always like, okay, VC investment in a tool, not hot, but a tool can get a beachhead and become a platform. Yeah, right. You can you can extend down into the platform. Well, it's essentially well, what it's service now did. Yeah. If I could just pitch one more thing, that's yeah. one thing that we that we are very cognizant of as focal point is don't make it an app, make it a platform. So, you know, when we talk about rolling out these rich self service features around a, to a topic of interest, we actually made the features extensible so that you can you can actually add apps to our app. Yeah, so right. if you want to so have if you want to have a project management summarization engine at the top of every topic of interest, if your topic of interest are projects, for example, then you just build that widget and kind of clunk it into your into your focal point. Yeah, and that's the key. I mean, these mini platforms can exist. Awesome. Well, Robert, thanks for coming on the queue. Really Great. appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations. I did see your tweet about private instances out there. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it's following you on Twitter. So thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it. This is the Cube here, live in Las Vegas with ServiceNow, Knowledge 15. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>